So this series of videos uh, serves as a supplement to the podcast on screening, diagnosis, and assessment of uh, fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. Um, so usually this portion of the evaluation comes in after the initial recognition uh, of a concern about the possibility of a FASD, uh, after uh, information has been gathered about alcohol exposure, uh, the growth history of the child and the child's developmental and behavioral histories, um, then comes the physical assessment. So the physical assessment basically has two parts. Uh, first is to look for the three cardinal features, uh, physical features of prenatal alcohol exposure, which are the short palpebral fissures, the smooth philtrum, and the thin upper lip. The assessment can go further though and also include uh, evaluation for other characteristics that occur at lower frequency uh, but are easy to assess and can support uh, a diagnosis and in some cases have uh, medical implications for the individual being assessed. And these are things such as cervical spine abnormalities that can limit mobility, um, radial humeral synostosis that can limit pronation and supination at the elbows, uh, and short uh, distal phalanges of the fingers. Uh, the only tool that you really need for this part of the assessment, in addition to your usual diagnostic equipment, uh, is a ruler, ideally a transparent ruler, uh, and even more ideally to have uh, a few rulers with different colors uh, uh, to provide contrast against a range of skin tones. Um, some tips are to stabilize the ruler uh, against the face by holding your hand against a portion of the face, uh, to try to hold the ruler parallel in three dimensions to the palpebral fissure, um, and to get as close as possible to the eye to get an accurate measurement. Uh, also ideal is a neutral facial expression on the patient. Um, this can be a little bit of a challenge in infants uh, at times, uh, so we will see sample exams uh, initially of uh, a child, a school-aged child, to kind of give an overview of the exam, and then of an infant, um, and then also an adolescent to, to uh, highlight some of the challenges that the assessment presents in each of those age groups. Uh, the physical assessment portion of the uh, diagnostic evaluation is actually fairly straightforward and I think uh, simple enough once uh, learned to be incorporated into a well-child evaluation. Um, after typical measurements of recumbent length in children less than two years old or standing height in older children, weight and head circumference, and actually the head circumference needs to be done in children of all ages for this purpose, uh, and having all of those plotted on standard charts, we can then move into the portion of the examination that's specific to looking for manifestations of uh, prenatal alcohol exposure. So Evan is doing a great job keeping a neutral facial expression, which is ideal, but obviously not always possible. Um, we'll start by measuring his eyes. So Evan, I'm going to use this ruler just to measure across your eyes, just like that. In measuring the palpebral fissures, it's best to keep the ruler uh, in an angle parallel with the eye, really in three dimensions. So if the eye is slanted one way or another, you adjust the ruler this way. If the orbit is canted in or out, you can adjust the ruler this way uh, to get the most accurate measurement. Um, but really, you just want to measure from the inner margin of his eye, the inner corner, to the outer corner where the skin um, uh, portions of the eyelids come together. And for children with epicanthic folds or folds of skin over the inner margin, uh, sometimes you have to account for that a little bit um, and add a couple of millimeters to what you can see. So for Evan, I'll put the ruler just like this and then align my uh, eyesight so that I get a good straight on view of the palpebral fissure. And his right palpebral fissure measures 26 millimeters. And then I do the same thing on the left side. Then I'd like to take a look in your mouth. If you could tip your head back just a little bit and open your mouth real wide, very good. So I can look at the roof of your mouth or the palate and then say, ah. Ah. Okay, and I can see his uvula, which has a nice normal formation. Good, you can close your mouth. Now what I want to have you do is I want to see how your neck moves. So if you can tuck your chin down so it touches your chest, very good. Okay, now bring your face back up and then tip your head back as far as you can. Good, okay, bring it back. And then uh, I want you to tip your head sideways so your ear goes to your shoulder. Very good. Okay, now try on the other side. So Evan has a nice, normal neck mobility. And then the final part is to look at the hands and the elbows. So Evan, if you can show me your fingers like this. We look at the palmar creases. Um, there is, uh, in the literature, uh, what's called a hockey stick palmar crease, where, where the distal crease um, angles up into the space between the first and second figures, fingers. 
Uh, but this is a very non-specific finding. Um, more important is to look at the distal digits and see how long they are. Uh, shortening or hypoplasia of the distal digits is another characteristic finding. Evan doesn't have that either. And then while we're looking at the hands and keeping the elbow bent, we just uh, pronate and supinate at the elbow to check for any signs of radio uh, ulnar synostosis. And Evan doesn't have that either. So as we would expect, Evan has no signs of prenatal alcohol exposure. Uh, and that's really uh, the exam, looking for the features that are characteristic of prenatal alcohol. Not too bad, huh? Next, we'll see an assessment of an eight-month-old infant. So Lucy has had her length measured and her weight and her head circumference. And now we're going to look at Lucy's eyes. What? And Lucy's not happy. Here. So obviously, anything we can do to engage her is very good and helpful. And we're going to measure right across her inner canthal distance there. Here, look. And get a good look at her right palpebral fissure using the ruler and aligning it with the plane of her eye. You did a very good job, 24 millimeters. And now, is this getting, this is getting in the way probably. And now we'll try the left one. And Lucy is cooperating very nicely. Lucy, you like that card, don't you? And again, aligning the ruler, we get 24 millimeters on the left side. Your eyes match. Now, can we trade? What do you think? You like this better? This has a picture. And what we want to do, again, is compare the lip and philtrum to the lip philtrum guide. And ideally, you want to observe um, Lucy when she's not making a face, which is a challenge in an infant. And I've found also that it can be successful to do this part of the exam during the history when the child's actually not engaged. Um, her lip and philtrum are certainly normal. She's got the lip tucked in a little bit at the moment. Now look, what do we have here? There, now you can see her lip and philtrum a little better. Obviously an infant's neck mobility is a more passive observation and she has shown a fairly normal range of motion of her neck. We can still do the hand exam, look for the shortening of the distal uh, phalanges of the fingers, and pronation and supination. Let's see on this side. I want you to plop over backwards. There, very good job. Finally, an assessment of an adolescent. So in older children who uh, are either going through or have been through puberty, there are some changes in the face that sometimes throw off the initial impression of the physical characteristics that we're looking for, but the cardinal features are still present. So the evaluation really isn't uh, much different. What I'd ask you to do though, Mackenzie, is take your glasses off if you would please. What I wanna do first is measure across your eyes so um, using the ruler, I'll measure from the inner corner of your left eye to the inner corner of your right eye, which is uh, three centimeters. And then again, angling the ruler uh, to the plane of the eye, we'll measure across your right eye, which has a palpebral fissure length of 29 millimeters. And then on the left, do the same thing. And the measurement again is 29 millimeters. Then I'd like to take a look at your ears. If you could turn your head that way just a little bit so we can show for the camera. Tuck your hair back here, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. There we go. Just to look at the ridges again. And she has nice, normal uh, ear ridges. And then back this way. And again, on this side, ear ridges look nice and normal. Let's look at your philtrum first. So um, again, she has a nice, neutral facial expression and a very normally formed uh, philtrum and upper lip, uh, somewhere between a two and three. And I'll have you open your mouth and tip your head back just a little bit. Very good. Okay, and then say ah. Ah. Okay, good. Nice normal uh, palate and uvula. And then um, you had your head halfway there. Why don't you tip your head back as far as you can reach? Okay, good. And then bring it back down and now touch your chin to your chest. Very good. Okay, bring your chin back up and then tip your head to the side and put your ear on your shoulder. And then on the other side. Very good. Okay, nice normal neck mobility. 
we'll take a look at your hands. Again, nice normal distal phalanges. And then we'll check pronation and supination, and that seems fine. Very good. Okay. For more information, contact the FASD Regional Training Center nearest you.